Have you ever made an edit in GarageBand on your iPhone or your iPad and wished you could change it and take it back? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how non-destructive editing in GarageBand can help you fix your mix. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete, and this is Studio Live Today, where I help you create, record, and release your best music. And I'm actually in the middle of mixing my new song, a punk song called Goats. And I realized as I was going through this that I use the power of non-destructive editing all the time. But perhaps there's some folks out there that don't completely understand exactly how it works and exactly what you can do with it. So in this video, we're going to dive in and take a look. Let's go now. So here we are in GarageBand, and you can see here I've recorded some drums, I've got some guitars here, and I've got some vocals for this punk song. And what you're probably noticing already is that a lot of these, in fact all of them, have been done in multiple chunks or multiple takes. And that's a way to make sure that if you are getting a part wrong and it's taking you a while to play through the whole thing, just stop yourself and then go to a point where you can start up again, and then you can what we call punch in, which means that if I'm playing this guitar here part here, you can see there that I've punched in between this part and this part here. And this is one of the key places where non-destructive editing comes in, because what you'll notice here is if we've punched in right there on the spot, we might not be able to get the timing exactly right, and we might want to adjust exactly where that punch in takes place. And what we can actually do is if I wanted to record from there, what I could do is punch in from back here and then use non-destructive editing to actually fix it up. So what do I mean? Let's come in here. When we have have two audio parts like this. So these are two separate audio files. So GarageBand stores these as audio files. And the good news is that regardless of what we do, if we drag this out here, and if we drag this out here, it still keeps all of the original audio in that file. So nothing is lost. It's non-destructive. It doesn't destroy or delete any of that audio. So that means that if we want to, afterwards, we can come back and drag this back out. And then we can grab this one and drag it back into here and it's still there. It still holds that audio in place. So that is a really key thing to consider when we're doing something like this because we can then adjust this edit point really exactly. If we wanted this to be here and if we wanted this to be further over, we could actually adjust those two points and it really helps you line up your tracks and get everything sounding really good. So let's use this guitar since we're focused in on this one as a bit of an example here. So we'll go back to the way we had it originally. Uh, if I could do that, we'll just slide that one back. We'll slide that one back. Let's listen to this transition and see what we think. So that's actually pretty darn good because uh, I wanted to do it right on the bar there. We'll just tap off there. Um, so it actually sounds okay. You can barely hear that it's two different takes. So if we play it again... But what we could do is if we did need to adjust that, we could actually do that. So let's uh, now come down and take a look at another example, but let's use some vocals this time. And what I've actually got here, so in the chorus of these vocals, and this is another little sort of mini tip uh, that's part of this, is that I've actually used two tracks. I've double tracked the vocals, but I've done it for a particular reason. And that is because in the chorus of this song, I had the last word of the first line overlapping very slightly on the first word of the second line. So instead of having to sing blah, 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 and then just jumping straight back in, I was able to actually do it this way. Let me show you what I mean. Let's play back this chorus section. We will leave everything else on. You can take a bit of a listen and let's play it now. Goats have it easier than me. They don't have to work. They don't have to lift a finger. Goats have it easier than me. So there you go, the lift a finger, goats. So I wouldn't be able to actually physically sing that. So um, don't ever worry. If you're making a song like this, especially a punk song, uh, it does that all the time. So you have that, um, you know, the, the crossover that you have between words. So let's zoom in on this one. And you can see here that there is where I've cut in with my second vocal. Now, you might be thinking, well, I could have put this up on here because it's not really much of an overlap, but again, it's going to sound better doing it this way, but the cut in is right there at the start because that's the way I've cut this at the time. The good news is though that I can grab this handle and I can pull it a little bit beforehand. So if let's just line it up like that and then I can do the same with this one because we want to edit this part out of it. We can just have the overlap a little bit like that. Now let's go and play this chorus part again and we'll listen and see if we've got that transition sounding right now. Work, they don't have to lift a finger. Goats have it easier than me. They just 
there you go, a lot more natural. And yeah, we're going to have to make sure we align and do some volume matching and mixing, which we'll do in a future video all about mixing uh, here in GarageBand. But that is going to help us do that. And again, we get that cut wrong. We get it right. We've, we've got that flexibility. We can actually come in here and move that around. So that is super, super cool. Okay, one thing to keep in mind when you're doing this is that if you do multiple chunks or multiple takes like I do here, everyone is its own audio file. So what do I mean by that? Well, if, for instance, we didn't like this in this lead guitar part, we didn't like this part, and this is one particular take that we did, if we delete that entirely, then we're not going to be able to get it back. So this is where I say, if you are planning to delete something, you may want it back, duplicate it first. So make a duplicate track. So we'd go tap, we'd go duplicate, we'd get a secondary track here. We can then copy all of these, because this is four separate guitar takes that we have here. So we'll just tap outside and drag over all those, tap on them, tap again, tap copy. Now, if we line our playhead up with the first one here, so we're going to come in, we've got to make sure that the first one lines up, then we can come here, we can tap and we can paste. And that is going to paste everything that we just had nicely in sync there. So this will then be our backup copy. We'll just mute that for now. And then we've got our regular copy here. So what we can then do, because this, for instance, is just one audio file. If we deleted this, and it's gone, Whoop, we'll undo that. We had everything selected. We'll just want this one, we'll tap it, we'll delete it. So if we delete that one and then we go, oh, we want that back. Oh, no worries, non-destructive editing. Well, we can grab this handle and pull this out gently, but that's the only place that that goes to. And the same with this one. If we grab the handle there, it only goes to there because that's where our takes actually came in. We'll just undo that one. So unless we still have part of that audio file, then we're out of luck. But because we've got our backup copy here, all we needed to do now is make sure we're here, line it up and bring back our backup copy back into our main project. And there we can bring that back in. So if in doubt, don't trust that destructive editing's going, non-destructive editing is going to work because if it's a separate audio file, you won't be able to do it. That being said, if you do have something that you know is an entirely uh, single uh, phrase, so if you've got a vocal that you've recorded and uh, it's all just one file, then you can chop it up and it still retains that original file. So let me show you a quick example of what I mean by that. Let's come in here to my verse section of the core, of course, verse section of the vocals, which sounds like this. I find it hard to be okay with a So that's all cool. Like that's what my vocals would be. And then I could obviously just bring this back, tap, tap on the edge here and drag it back and do my editing and do whatever I want, or I can bring it back to there. But what I could also do is say that I did a, a cut here. So for whatever reason, I don't like this word. We could split there, uh, split, and then move it down to, whoop, move it down to here. And let's split again. If I deleted this part entirely in the middle here, tap it, tap again, tap delete, then I could get that back by either just grabbing one of these handles and dragging like so, like we did before, or even if we just delete completely one of these, that's gone, we can just grab this one and redrag it all the way across because it's still, both of those edit points are retaining the entire take of audio. So that's a really handy thing that if you're trying to move things around and you get something cut and you don't want it cut anymore, you can just grab it. So again, as long as you've recorded the original audio, as long as it's part of that original take, that original chunk of audio, then you'll be good to go. And that is how we can use non-destructive editing to our advantage here in GarageBand. It's very cool. It means that no matter what you do, you've retained that audio file. Now, it works in a similar way for MIDI. So if you've got a MIDI instrument and you want to do the same sort of thing, it will work as well. If, if As long as it's part of that original performance and that chunk of audio, you can drag those handles. And if you cut it back and you want to put it back in, you can drag it back out again and you will be back to your original format. And there you go, a very simple concept, but hopefully one that now you understand a little bit more about will help you not worry so much about some of those editing decisions and it will help you recover from some of the problems that you may have had editing your tracks in the past. Thanks for watching. If you've got comments, questions, or suggestions, you can leave those down below and I'll see you on the next video. Hey, thanks for sticking around. If you would like to watch some more videos here on the channel, there are two linked right down below. You can also subscribe by clicking or tapping on the Studio Live Today icon in the top right corner, or you can head on over to studiolivetoday.com for even more audio goodness.